a very good morning to all of you. My dear students, as you all know that the time is one of the difficult time of lockdown and coronavirus. And that is why we the teachers of Sigam Chiam Academy have decided to give you some online teaching. Because it's very important for you people that during this lockdown time you stay in touch with the studies. Especially because you belong to class 10th and 12th board going classes. So it's very important that you stay in touch with your regular studies every day and you do homework also. And that is why we have made a specific timetable that each teacher will follow and accordingly you will get videos every day in your group. As a part of that, today in this lecture, obviously we will be discussing about mathematics. Students, as you all know that we have completed one chapter of statistics in our regular classroom teaching. But now, we will be discussing it with a new chapter here. The chapter that I am going to start today in this first video lecture is chapter number 14, Statistics. Before I start this chapter, let me tell you, this is one of the very, very important topic in mathematics as well as for upcoming years also. Doesn't matter whether you are going to go for 11th and 12th commerce or science. In both the fields, you will find statistics over there. So it's one of the very important chapter for the future perspective also. And in the graduation and post-graduation courses also. So the basic comes here. If you already know that there was one chapter in class 9th, the same title, Statistics. But what was the difference over there in class 9th and class 10th is, over there it was very basic topic, a kind of just an introduction. A very simple data was given and you were supposed to find out mean, median and mode. I think you have heard these three names. But over here, now we will discuss something professional something good about this chapter statistics which you will be getting very good help in your upcoming standards. Before we go for any of the topic or any of the exercise or any of the sums, let me give you a small idea that what are you going to have in this chapter. There are basically four topics or four exercises in this chapter. The first exercise talks about the topic mean. First exercise talks about chapter mean. Second one talks about median. Then you have one more topic called mode. And last one is graphs. There are basically four of these topics and each topic covers one exercise each. All these four things are quite simple and all the students normally takes this chapter as one of the very good chapter. They like this chapter a lot because there are fixed formulas. If you remember the formulas, if you know once what to do, you will be able to do it. You don't need to apply a heavy amount of brain over here. So that is why this topic is considered to be one of the very simple topic. Now before discussing the full chapter, we will be discussing one by one in each of our video lectures. As today as the first lecture, I will be talking about this topic mean. The mean is in simple terms also known as average mean in simple terms also known as average. For example, let me give you a small hint or small example which you were doing in class 9th. Suppose you have 5 subjects and you scored 20, 30, 40, 50 and 10 out of 50 marks. There were 5 subjects. In first subject you scored 20, in second 30, 3rd 40, 4th 50 and 5th only 10. 
If someone asks you to find out average of these marks, mean of these marks, then how will you find out? It's very simple. What you need to do is to just add all the numbers 20, 30, 40, 50, 10 and you need to divide it by total number. How many marks were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you need to divide it by 5. So the average will come to 30. That means you have on an average 30 marks in each and every subject. But this was very simple. We are talking about class 9th. Over here in class 10, it will not be that simple the question. Which I said just right now, these 5 observations, 5 marks in 5 different tests, they are called ungrouped data, which was there in class 9. But now onwards, in class 10 and upcoming standards, you will be having group data. Now what do we mean by group data first of all? If you remember your lower standards, you will find there was something called frequency distribution table. In classes 7, 8, 9, you were learning this frequency distribution table. Over there, you were writing something of this type. Then from 0 to 10, you have something 3. From 10 to 20, you have suppose 5. From 20 to 30, for example, say suppose you have 8. So this type of sums were there in lower classes where you were having this type of groups. These are called groups. 0 to 10 is first group, 10 to 20 is second group, 20 to 30 is third group. These are called groups and these are called frequencies. So this type of data, obviously in standard 10 this will not be there. Only these two columns will be there. So this is called group data. So in class 10, you will be solving all these sums, all these topics, mean, mean and more, only for group data. Because ungrouped data is quite simple and it was in class 9th, 8th and so on. So in standard 10 we will be discussing about this. So this is about group data and ungrouped data. This you must know before you start any of the topic. Because every question will have this type of data. So if you will not be knowing the difference between ungrouped and group, then you might be able to solve the sums, but then your basics, your concepts will not be clear. That is why it is very important, first of all, to know the basic things, you know, ungrouped and grouped data. So this was this basic topic. Now if I focus on the main topic, the main topic is mean. If I focus on this main topic, there are three methods in this one topic also. There are three methods by which you can solve the same sum of one given question. Yani ki, ek question diya ho, you can solve it by three methods. Which are those three methods? One, the first one is called direct method. First one is called direct method. Second one is called Assume mean method. Second one. This is first one. This is second one. And third one. Third one is known as step deviation method. Step deviation method. So there are three methods by which you can solve the same sum. Before I go for any of the sum of the first exercise, I want to clear over here these three methods. Now forget about these topics. We will be discussing them later on. Because right now we are focusing only on the first exercise and first topic which is mean, average. So there will be three methods. Question will be same. And the same type of question will be there in each and every method. But over there in the question, either the name of the method will be given or no method's name is given. So two choices can be there. Now if the name of the method is given, then you don't have a choice in your examination. You have to solve that method. But if the name is not given, then you can choose any of the three methods. Whichever you like after you learn all three. Right? 
so choice is yours if the name is not given but you must be knowing all the three methods because in exam if suppose you think that all three are doing the same thing then why should we learn all three let us learn only one no it is not possible because if suppose in exam they ask you that find out the mean by using step deviation method and suppose you have not done it you have done it only one the first one because it was very simple then your job will not be done that is why it is very important to learn all the three methods we will learn each method one by one okay if i talk about the first name direct method then it is very simple as the name suggests it is very direct method no indirect things no long calculations very simple and straightforward direct method all these three methods are a bit long than the previous one like assume mean method is a bit long than the direct method the step deviation method is a bit long than this assume mean method but although they are long but as the level goes on they make the sum easy that is why you might feel the third method a bit long compared to this one and this one but if you look at the question and if the numbers in the questions are big then ideally you should go for this method it will make your numbers and calculation small so this method is a bit long but very important fine so these are the three methods now each method have the formula each method have the formula like the first method direct method direct method has this formula x bar is equal to sigma xi fi by sigma fi now whenever you have a new formula you must be knowing what are the terms involved in the formula if you look at this one x bar is a symbol for mean x bar is a symbol for mean this sigma here both place numerator denominator sigma means in simple terms you call it sum addition these xi's and fi's fi means frequency fi means frequency over here fi this one numerator is also frequency and this xi are the midpoints of classes xi are the midpoints of classes so you must be knowing that which unknown term denotes what before you start any sum so this formula you need to remember before you start this first method again i repeat formula is x bar equals to sigma xi fi by sigma fi i will teach you how to find out by using this formula you will also find this formula in your last page of the chapter that means in summary in summary you will find all the formulas three methods of mean one of median one of mode everything so in your summary you can refer your last page of your summary to find out all these formulas which i am writing on this board right now so in this video lecture we'll be discussing one by one all the methods i'm not writing the second formula right now because our first target is to talk about direct method okay so my dear students now we are going to start the first exercise and in that first exercise we are going to start the first sum the sum of direct method for finding out the mean okay so let me start this first sum if you are looking at the video right now you can also open up your textbook and you can also write down the question and you can find out with me the first one finding out the mean now when you write down these things in your fair book make sure that you write it properly you need to draw the tables over here so keep scales and pencils with you okay first sum i am writing over here first sum i am reading out the question you might be having your textbook with you i am also having it with me i am reading out the question it says a survey was conducted by a group of students as a part of their environment awareness program in which they collected the following data 
regarding the number of plants in 20 houses in a locality. Find the mean number of plants. This is the line I have studied. This chapter is specifically in the same sense. This is the data that you have to write. This is the data that you have to write. So you are not supposed to be worried about what the data is exactly about. What you should main focus in the question is what they want to ask you, what they want to find you. They are asking you to find out mean. So now I am writing the main data. In question, data is given something like this. They have given a small table in the data. There are two rows. First is number of plants. This is the first row. And next is number of houses. Number of plants and number of houses. This I am writing the question. Then I will start the solution. Okay. Number of plants in which they are given, first group is 0 to 2, second group is 2 to 4, third group is 4 to 6, next group is 6 to 8, next is 8 to 10, next is 10 to 12, and the last one is 12 to 14. So these are the groups given in the question. All groups have been given frequency, like first group has 1, then 2, then 1, then next one is 5, then 6, then 2, and 3. So this is your question. What you want to find out, what the question says? Find mean. So remember this one, find mean. Now if you read the question in your textbook properly, the name of the method is not given. That means you have your choice of liberty, whichever method you want to go for. Because we are teaching or learning for the first time, are we talking about the first method? That is direct method. Okay? So now see how to solve this sum by using direct method. So we are going to use it direct method over here. Remember this one. Now every sum will have table in the answer. Every sum. There will be few number of columns in each table. How many columns that depends on which method you use. If you are using this first method, direct method, there will be four columns. I repeat, there will be four columns in this one. The first column will be the same from the question. You need to take it from the question. No need to make any changes. Number of plants. You need to copy the first column from the question. But you need to write it down this column, this row as this column format. That means 0 to 2, then you have next 2 to 4, then you have 4 to 6, then you have 6 to 8, then you have 8 to 10, then next one is 10 to 12, and last one is 12 to 14. So you need to write down it from the question. You need to write it down from the question. And as I said, there will be 4 columns. If you are using this first direct method, there will be four columns. Second column will be about, again, from the question, number of houses. Same from the question. Again, no need to make any changes. Just write it down, this horizontal form in a vertical form. So, 1, 2, 1, 5, 6, 2, 3. Now remember one thing, the second row which is given always in the question, whatever name it might be having, but for us they are frequencies, F I, F stands for frequency and why there is this small i, i means numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, that means this is also frequency, this is also frequency, this is also frequency, so if you want to give the names, you cannot give the name F to all f equals to 1, is coming on f, this one also f, this one also f, no. You cannot give the same name to all. That is why this will be called f1, this is f2, this is f3, this is f4, this is f5. That is why we are giving over here the name fi. So fi is a general name. So remember always, this second row is always frequencies, right? Now third row, 
you need to make buy on your own and that is xi what is xi i told you few minutes back when i was writing the formula over here that xi means midpoints so you need to find out the midpoints of this particular classes like it is very simple what is the midpoint of 0 and 2 what comes exactly between 0 and 2 is 1 what comes exactly between 2 and 4 it is 3 what comes exactly between 4 and 6 it is 5 if it is big number you should do this thing you should add this two numbers this is called lower limit this is called upper limit for any class whenever you have any class suppose you have the class 100 to 200 suppose you have this class then what will be xi exactly in center 150 but if you don't know it directly how will you do you will add this two numbers this is called lower limit this is called lower limit this is called upper limit so if you want to find out this mid value central value then what you should do you should add this two numbers 100 plus 200 divided by 2 so you have 300 divided by 2 so you will get 150 so this is how you can find out the center values but because here the numbers are very small So I am directly writing it like six and eight. What comes in between? Seven, eight and ten, nine. Then over here, eleven. Over here, thirteen. So these are the mid values in this case. It's very simple. So I am writing it directly. Last column. It will be x i f i. That means multiplication of these two columns. Multiplication means. If you multiply this to one into one, you will get one. If you multiply this to, you will get two threes are six. If you multiply this to, five ones are five. If you multiply this to, five sevens are thirty-five. If you multiply this to, six nines are fifty-four. If you multiply this to, you will get twenty-two. If you multiply this to, you will get thirty-nine. So this is how you need to multiply these two columns. Okay, so this is the last column x i f i. Now our table is done. Table had four columns. I repeat quickly again. First column will be from the question, no changes. Second column again will be from question, no changes. But give the name f i. So two columns from the question, two column we need to make it. Which is the third one x i. How will you make it? Midpoints of all this one. and fourth column as the name says multiplication of this two always multiply this two number and write it over here multiply this two numbers and write it over here so the table is done now after making the full table you need to write down the formula you need to write down the formula mean which you wanted to find out mean equals to x bar the symbol of mean is x bar So x bar equals to. If you remember the formula which I told you few minutes back, which you will find out in your summary also, it is this one. Sigma x i f i by sigma f i. Now, how to put values? Because we have not discussed anything about sigma here. So as I told you, sigma means sum, addition. So if you have written sigma f i. That means the addition of f i. Now where are f i? Here is f i. So you need to add these numbers, and you need to write it down over here at last. Sigma f i. What this will come to? One plus two three. Three plus one four. Plus five nine. Plus six fifteen. Plus two seventeen. Plus three twenty. So what will be the addition of this full column f i? It will be twenty. So your sigma f i is twenty. What else you want? Sigma x i f i. So here is x i f i. You want total of this also. So you need to make the total. So if you make the total over here, thirty one plus thirty nine plus one forty plus six forty six plus five fifty one plus thirty five fifty one plus thirty five will give you eighty six. 86 plus 4 90. 90 plus 50 will give you 
140 plus 22 will give you 162. So the addition of this one is 162. So now we can put the formula and the values also. So if you look at this formula, it has only two things. One is sigma xi fi. What is the answer of sigma xi fi? It is 162 upon sigma fi. What is the answer of sigma fi? It is only 20. Now you need to perform this division. You need to perform this division. And if you perform this division very well, easily, you will find this answer. It's very simple, you can perform orally also, 162. If you divide 162 by 2, you will get 81. But you have 20 over here, so you need to divide it by 10 more. That means 8.1. You can do this division in your rough book also, if you cannot do it orally. You can do it in your rough book also. So final answer of mean is 8.1. So this is the answer of this mean. And this was direct method. One of the very, very simple methods. Right? So again I repeat fast, question will be given to you, the question asking you to find out me, no name was given, but because we are learning it for the first time, so first we went for direct method, okay? You can solve this same sum which, with second method also, that is assumed mean method, which we are going to do right now after this one. So this is direct method, what you need to do in answer, four columns in a table, Two columns, first two columns, just copy from the question, but from the horizontal form, write it in vertical form. Third column, xi, means midpoints. Fourth column, multiplication of this two. So you write it over here. Then you put the formula, mean equals to this one. You look at the formula, what you want in formula, you want sigma fi. That is why we done sigma fi. What else you want? You want sigma xi fi. That is why we done sigma xi fi. Then that's it, just put the value, perform the division, and you are done. So this is method number one, direct method. Now suppose, we talk about the second method, that is assumed mean method. Again, same topic, question will be same, mean. But suppose the question asks you, that perform the second method, that means assumed mean method. Then how will you do? What is the formula? What are the changes in this one? So let me teach you that one. I am not erasing this question because we are going to solve the same question with the second method. So that you come to know whether you are getting the same answer 8.1 or not. Okay? So I am not erasing the question. I am just making changes in this one. Obviously I need to erase this one. So I am removing this one. This was the formula for direct method. Okay? And I am removing this one column also. Baki sab teen columns ko rakha hai yuki aple method mein bhi ye chahi. That is why I am keeping it over here. Now before we talk about this sum again, let me talk about the formula. What I say, the name of the method is which one? Assumed mean method. This is the name of the second method. Assumed mean method. Again, it will give you the answer of mean. It is a mean hi milega. Mean in India board nahi. Remember this thing. We are into the first topic only. Mean. We are not talking about median and mode. We are talking about the first topic. Mean. But by second method. Okay. Let's go for this method. Formula. First of all. Formula is x bar equals to. Small change is there. A plus sigma fi di by sigma fi this is the small change in this one you have some new name now you have something new di what is di? I am writing here di equals to xi minus a di equals to xi minus a so this is the formula. Before I go for the sum, let me explain you or let me introduce you people. How many unknowns are there? X bar you already know it. It is mean. Fi you already know it. It is frequency. Di I told you. Di is this Xi minus A. 
x i you already know it it is midpoints here it is written that is why i have not erased now what is this small a what is the small a as the name suggests assumed mean assumed mean assume matlab suppose kiya hua assume kiya hua to is a ko bhi bolte hain assume mean ye kya karega humko dhoondta kya hai mean original mean dhoondta hai assume mean nahi assume to hum kisi ko bhi kar sakte hain assume nahi we want to find out the original mean but to find out the original mean we will take the help of assume mean so hum kisi ek ko yahan mean banayenge by to mean hai uski help leke we will find out the original mean this is what this method is all about okay so you just remember this formula remembering of formula is very 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 important if you don't know the formula you cannot do nothing just simply totally blank but if you know the formulas is this formality okay so remember the formulas i am not erasing it over here from right now now think about the same sum okay same question and it is asking you to find out mean suppose the name of the method is given in the question they are asking us to find out by assume mean so now what to do come on let's start the answer this is the question first column सेम जैसे पहले मेथड में थी क्वेश्चन में से नो चेंजेस सेकेंड कॉलम सेम फ्रॉम द क्वेश्चन नो चेंजेस थर्ड कॉलम क्वेश्चन में तो है नहीं थर्ड कॉलम वी हैव मेड इट एक्साइज मिड पॉइंट यहां के जो उस मेथड में लिखा था थर्ड कॉलम वो यहां भी चाहिए उनको यहां भी लिखना है अब चौथी कॉलम वहां की तरह नहीं है fourth column is not same fourth column is different and obviously fifth column will also be different fourth and fifth column here we don't have the formula xi here we have di so this fourth column must be of di okay fourth column must be of di how to find out di formula i told you xi minus a and what is the last one over here we want fi di kya tha pichle sum mein ye column thi ye column bhi thi ye column bhi thi chauthi column kaun si thi seedha in dono ka multiplication chauthi column mein tha in dono ka kyunki formula wo chahiye tha now what the formula wants formula does not want xi fi we look at here formula does not want xi fi फॉर्मूला वॉन्स एफ आई डी आई सो एफ आई तो है अगर इसको इसे छोड़ देंगे डी आई फाइन नहीं करेंगे तो ये कैसे बनाएंगे दैट इज वाई फोर्थ कॉलम इज डी आई फिफ्थ कॉलम इज एफ आई डी आई नाउ हाउ टू फाइन दिस फोर्थ कॉलम ये तो बहुत सिंपल था ये दो कॉलम तो यहां से लेनी थी वेरी सिंपल थर्ड कॉलम इट इज वेरी सिंपल मिड पॉइंट बट हाउ टू फाइंड आउट दिस वन था डी आई ये कैसे ढूंढना चाहिए डी आई फॉर्मूला तो है हमारे पास एक्स आई माइनस ए बट ए कहा है एक्स आई जानते हैं चलो ये रहे ये सारे एक्स आई लेकिन ये स्मॉल ए कौन है ये पता नहीं हमें so, सबसे पहले हमको स्मॉल ए कौन है ये जरा सोचना पड़ेगा उसके बाद ये कॉलम बन पाएगी जब ये कॉलम बनेगी तब इन दोनों का मल्टीप्लाई होकर ये कॉलम बनेगी और फिर यहां हम फॉर्मूला में वैल्यू पुट कर पाएंगे ओके सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द स्मॉल ए लिसन वेरी केयरफुल वॉट इज स्मॉल ए small a is any of the value of this column is column mein se aap kisi ko bhi small a naam de sakte hain jaise ki yahan isko bola kisi ne ke bhai maan lijiye mere liye a hai ye 7 to bhi no problem koi bole mujhe a isko banana hai no problem if anyone says i want to make this one as a no problem you can call any value of this column as a any value but if suppose one student is calling phi as a to uske yahan wale number alag honge dusre student se jisne 7 ko a bola hoga agar kisi ne 9 ko bola hoga to it is or alag honge let it be let it be different but the final answer of x bar will not change 
and that is why you have full liberty you can call any of the value as a okay no problems at all ideally people call it ideally i am saying people call it in very center a exactly mid mein jo value ho usko a bolte hain but there is no rule i am telling you don't call it this one main to bolta hu har baar pehle number ko a bol do fayda kya hoga i will tell you okay suppose a is one you can try at your home again i am saying by calling a as 3 a as 9 a as 13 anything these numbers will be different but final answers will be same okay suppose if i call a equals to 1 now let us make this column bi how to make this column what the formula says xi minus a where is xi ye sab xi where is a a sab nahi a ki hai only one so kaise karna hai xi minus a sabse pehla xi kaun sa hai one aur a kaun hai a bhi one hai dono ko subtract karna hai so what we will get over here 36 so this column is very simple again multiplication now if you look at the formula table is done now if you look at the formula what we want small a we know what is small a what else you want sigma fi di sigma fi di that means fi di ki jo column thi uska karna hai sigma so in sab ko karna padega plus jaise humne pichle sum mein kiya tha So if I add all these numbers, sigma f i d i, add all these numbers, four and thirty six forty, forty plus twenty sixty, sixty plus forty eight, sixty plus forty eight is one zero eight, one zero eight plus thirty is one thirty eight, one thirty eight by four, a one thirty eight plus four, it is one forty two. 
So addition over here it comes 142. Okay, 142. So this is the addition over here. What else you want? Sigma fi. Sigma fi we have already done. It. it is what? 20. So now we have everything. Now is the time to put the values in the formula. I am erasing this one because now you already know what is the get. So this is how we are going to put the formula. Now let's put the values. X bar equals to what is small a? Small a is 1. So I am putting 1 here. Plus sigma fi di. What is sigma fi di? It is 142 divided by. What is sigma fi? It is 20. It is 20. If I go for the calculations, 1 plus, always spell in dono work to divide kalena chahiye, then you should add this one. Okay? So again, if you divide this one in your app book, it will, be, it will come to 7.1. Very simple. If you think about this 2, 142 by 2 is 71. And again, if you want to divide it by 10, you will get 7.1. So you have 1 plus 7.1. And if you add these two numbers, 1 and 7.1, you will get 8.1. Same answer. You got the 8.1 answer in your first method also, if you remember the direct method. So the moral of the story is, whether you use direct method, or you use assume mean method, or the third method, which we are going to learn in the next video lecture. If you use that third method also, you can find out the same answer. 8.1 so methods may change answer will not change okay this is the final slogan i want to tell you methods may change but the value will not change so quickly if you revise this method what you need to do five columns in first method four columns second method five columns if you go for five columns two columns will be same from the question no changes third column jo pehli method mein third column thi third column What is that? Xi. I will tell you here if Xi means midpoints. In the midpoints. Fourth column. What is Di? Di is the formula Xi minus A. A con is in the middle of the column. Anyone. No problem. But ideally, go for the first one. So negative numbers will not come in the picture. So go for the first one. So A is this one. Di, how to find out? Xi minus A. So how far in me se, yaha likhne de time pe, is ko minus karna hai. So 1 minus 1 0, 3 minus 1 2, 5 minus 1, 7 minus 1. Every time you need to minus A from these Xi's. Last is very simple. Multiply of this and this. And then addition. And then formula. So this is second method, assume mean method. Okay. So in this today's lecture, we discuss about the overall overview of the chapter. That how many topics are going to come because we are starting the chapter for the first time. Also, we discuss or started the first topic mean, which had three methods. So we started first and second, direct and assume mean method, and we have learned one by one both the methods. Now ideally, when you can solve this sums by on your own, when you perform very good homework. Okay, so homework for you people will be, homework for you people will be two sums. One is question number two and one is question number five. I am writing here on the board, exercise 14.1, question number two. And question number 5. Or rather do one thing. Instead of going for number 5. First of all go for number 6. It will be easy for you. So homework has two questions. Question number 2. And question number 6. Solve this first one by direct method. And solve this one by assumed mean method. So you will be having practice of both. This one by direct method. This one by assumed mean method. So these are the two sums in your homework. Okay. So if you perform these two sums, you will get the practice of these sums. 
and believe me these sums always appear in the board examinations so it's very very important for you people to understand this and to solve by writing in your notebook fine so thank you very much this was our first lecture of this topic when we are going to meet in the next topic as i told you we'll be discussing about the third method and one more topic mode of this chapter so that's it for the first lecture thank you and have a very good day stay home stay safe and take care very good of yourself and your family thank you and thank you so much